Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Tamara Thorpe and I am here today with another edition of our podcast for uh, our mentoring handbook called Making Connections, a handbook for effective formal mentoring uh, uh, programs in academia. I am honored to be here today with three of our authors uh, for the case study, case study number one in chapter 16. Uh, so I am here today uh, to talk with them about their case study called Becoming Awares, Mentoring Undergraduate Women in Engineering and Science. So I'm joined here today by Shirley Yu, who is an Associate Professor of Educational Psychology in the Department of Educational Studies at The Ohio uh, State University. She is also the Director of the University's Graduate Certificate in College and University Teaching. Her research centers on classroom context, self-regulated learning, and motivation in undergraduate science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, also known as STEM. She's engaged in mentoring and other programs with the overarching goal of improving retention and success uh, in STEM majors and careers, particularly among individuals from underrepresented populations. We are also joined by Ariana Black, who is a third year doctoral student in educational psychology program in the Department of Educational Studies at The Ohio State University. Ariana studies academic motivation and achievement and is particularly interested in social factors that affect student motivation. She's involved in several research projects pertaining to motivation and also teaches educational psychology course for pre-service teachers. And then uh, finally, we are here uh, with uh, Gunal Kalatunch, who's a professor of food engineering in the Department of Food, Agriculture, and Biological Engineering at The Ohio State University. She's the Director of Aspiration uh, for Women's Advancement and Retention in Engineering and Science, also known as AWARES, which focuses on women's retention in engineering uh, in the engineering discipline, and is also the director of the College of Engineering Faculty Mentoring Program, targeting recruitment, retention, and the development of successful careers for new faculty. So welcome to all of you. Thank you. So could you please start by sharing with all of us what inspired the work that you do, and particularly your work and research in mentoring? Well, Tamara, as you pointed out in the introduction, I think the major need was the promotion of the uh, retention of women in engineering in the workplace. And I developed a program after I went through myself or during the time that a women's executive leadership program managed by the administered by the Drexel University in 2016. I was nominated for that program and part of the requirement was to develop an institutional action project. And I was very much interested developing a mentoring program based on my conversation with my undergraduate students and because the if you look at the statistics, the women engineering students' numbers are very low. It is as high as the recorded in 2021 as 23%, uh, which is, uh, this is nationwide, not only in Ohio State, but considering all the universities in the United States. And so when I look at those though, I see that they recruit about 23% and they do graduate about 23%. So, and there is a lot of uh, retaining programs, mentoring programs for the undergraduates to get them to the graduation stage. But when I looked at the literature, it was more mind boggling for me that how much it drops uh, when the, these uh, women go to the workplace and before age 30 is the 30 to 40 percent of them quitting their jobs and 
the numbers then representative numbers is just 15 to 16 percent in the engineering workplace and the lack of uh, uh, participation there even affects more the women in the workplace which is kind of disparaging for them to continue uh, further and the study is done show that lack of mentoring and networking were the big issue the women actually had mentoring experiences had more desire and to contribute in the uh, engineering uh, field so um therefore uh, that it was really important to somehow train these women to prepare them better for transitioning to the workplace because they had uh, excellent technical skills. They had un internships under their belt. They were ready to go to do, but somehow they were lacking the career management skills or how to navigate the organization. That's what it was causing any issues. And the mentoring programs already available but the mentoring programs usually involved uh, just bringing a very highly successful in women engineer and having a presentation and this person typically left this is my contact information but uh, you know there was no interaction with the speaker so it kind of discourage people to contact her. Or there was one-to-one -one, um, mentoring programs, but the women and the student, women engineer and student will paired up, but there was no directions it's given and it didn't continue. So I looked at and I thought, we have a, we need a unique program. So that this should, first of all, to should be uh, over a, uh, some weeks to develop a relationship between the mentor and mentee and somehow giving a curriculum. So uh, mentee and mentor, they know what they are gonna talk about when they get together. And also then mentees coming together to discuss what they learned, what they share their reflections from their mentors. So the knowledge uh, becomes expanding among the mentees. So that was the uniqueness of the program, a curriculum, a mentor-mentee meeting, and a learning community meeting. And the, again, and the uh, ultimate goal is for them to understand the value of mentorship so they can seek mentorship even when they go to their workplaces. So with that in mind, Ganula reached out to me one year um, and invited me to participate in the evaluation research component of the program given my interest in underrepresented groups in STEM, I was really excited about the opportunity to work with her on a practical solution to this longstanding issue. Um, being involved in evaluation research is a really great way to engage in translational work that helps bridge that theory to practice gap. So that's how I got involved. For me, my involvement was also pretty similar to Shirley, so I'm really interested in motivation and learning in STEM, and particularly in the social factors that affect learning and achievement, as well as other important outcomes, such as persistence and retention. So early on in my time as a graduate student in the educational psychology program, I had mentioned to Shirley that I was really interested in research that focused on supporting women and supporting underrepresented populations in STEM settings. And from there, she and Gunul kindly invited me to be part of the AWARES team. That's fantastic. Thanks all of you for that, because I, as, as you have already articulated, the, the program 
is very full. It's very robust. It's got an incredible structure. And so I think that there's so much that folks can gain um, from reading through your case study and seeing the incredible work that you've done. So can you tell us and kind of share what, what do you really want people to take away uh, from your case study and the, the work that you've all done? I think the most important thing probably is that the need for mentoring. So everybody probably contributing to this book, they are agreeing with that. But the most important thing really, we need to mentor these students. And we need to mentor, not only teach them how to learn, because when somebody learns, and the knowledge becoming a power, so the confidence increases. So when they are, you know, faced with some real situations in the workplace, they know how to handle that. It's not their uh, behavior, or it's not going to be reactionary, but it is more well taught and calmly. They know how to approach uh, those uh, situations. And again, the ultimate goal is that we know what the mentees need. So that's why we have the curriculum. So we touch to certain topics that this could be from a job search, um, preparing for an interview, making decisions about their offers, how to transition the conflict resolution in dealing with the imposter syndrome and the microaggression. So all these kind of sensitive topics we touch upon during this mentoring uh, program. Um, so that's what, again, the uniqueness come from because, and the students kind of ready because their education is based on a syllabus curriculum. So I think this is not gonna be something different what we are doing for them. They like the structure, not only the students, but mentors like the structures too. We heard a lot about from mentors, how they like how they like the um, structure of the building structure of the program. In addition to the structure and the uniqueness of AWARES, one of the things that I hope the readers will take away is that our program has a strong basis in theory and research. So for example, the length of the program, 25 weeks, is supported by research on the phases of mentorship, which indicates that to develop a true working relationship, uh, mentors and mentees need time together. They need that sustained time to develop their relationship. Furthermore, we draw upon Bandura's social cognitive theory. And one of this theory's important components is the uh, uh, concept called self-efficacy, which is similar to confidence, but refers to a person's um, um, ability to, their beliefs and their ability to execute and organize their own behavior to achieve certain goals. So in our program, we work on developing the women's self-efficacy for a variety of workplace skills that will be important for them in order to persist in their careers. And we do that by building upon two important sources of self-efficacy. One is vicarious learning experiences. This refers to learning by watching somebody else succeed in a particular domain. So when the mentees are paired with their mentors, they see a successful model. They see another woman who has transitioned into the workplace and is, and is working and succeeding. Importantly, those women serve as what are described as coping models. That is, they share how they have encountered obstacles. They share how they have perhaps struggled, but overcome some of the things in the workplace that could be stumbling blocks. Um, and those types of models are more motivating and useful 
um, rather than someone who effortlessly succeeds on a task. In addition, the second source of self-efficacy that we build upon is called social persuasion. And that's pretty much like it sounds. It is having somebody else that you believe sharing their confidence in you, telling you that they know that you can succeed and walking you through that with that shared knowledge that with that support um, that the mentees will be able to succeed in their careers. For me, one of the things that I hope people learn about from our case study is how useful program evaluation can be. This is a really important feature for being able to determine the extent of program success, as well as areas to improve upon in the future um, to offer improved programs to students as um, as the program goes on. So for example, in our own experience, we've found from survey results, um, as Shirley was mentioning, that the length of the program is indeed suitable for moving through those phases of mentorship and building those strong relationships between mentors and mentees. So we know that both mentors and the mentees report that that 25 week length, 25 week length over the two semesters is indeed just the right amount of time for forming those relationships um, without it feeling too long or too short. So they don't feel like they're being rushed, but they also don't feel like the relationship has sort of um, overstayed its welcome. We also survey mentee self-efficacy for the different career management skills within the curriculum, both before, during, and after the program to determine the extent to which the program was effective. So having these three different time points with the surveys allows us to see that mentee's confidence does in fact increase over the course of the AWARES program. And perhaps uh, more importantly, that they're finishing the program with high levels of self-efficacy or that confidence for important career related skills as they're preparing for that transition to the workplace, which can be particularly destabilizing. So we're able to identify that they have those high levels of self-efficacy or confidence when they end the program. Another factor that's sort of unique in our program evaluation is where we have been able to survey mentors self-efficacy for their mentorship role. Um, and so we find that although they don't experience very much change in their self-efficacy, they have and they maintain those high levels of self-efficacy for the mentorship role. So it's really important to identify and to know that we have mentors who feel competent and confident in their roles as mentors. Um, and surveying these mentors has also helped us identify that mentors find value in the program. They really believe in it. Uh, they return year after year to continue mentoring, and they also recruit other women in engineering and STEM careers to join as mentors as well. So evaluating these different components of the program has really helped us understand what is effective and why, as well as areas that we can improve upon to make mentorship for women transitioning to STEM careers even more effective. Um, so I hope that others will really see the value in evaluating uh, mentorship programs. Yeah, I, I think that folks are really going to see the care that you all put in to the, uh, the research and to the evaluation to really build out a program that has had, uh, that has affected over 200 women that has been incredibly sustainable. And so I think that this is a great opportunity to talk about some of the impacts that the program has had. And I, and I believe you all have shared with me a graph and I wanna turn it over uh, to Gunol to kind of talk with us about what some of the impacts of the program have been? Well, I think as we say, we uh, really, uh, we developed a program, but we always seek for these evaluations. And then, you know, this graph clearly shows us that how the self-efficacy is developed, how the ment uh, mentee's confidence uh, build up from beginning uh, to the end of the program. But when we share the survey results with them and the anecdotal uh, com conversations with them, actually, uh, and then we tell them that, you know, the whole goal of the surveying for us to disseminate this information so other uh, organizations can develop, can implement this kind of mentoring models. 
Um, but uh, also it serves us that um, improvement of the program. So then since we seek their input, the, their feedback, then the AWARES becomes everyone's program. So the even the mentees uh, feel the ownership of the program and the mentors feel ownership of the program. So they, for example, mentees after graduation, after they go to the workplace, they return as mentors to the program. I think because when I first uh, come up with the idea and trying to pitch, there was a big, uh, you know, conversation about that. This is a very mentor intensive program because every uh, mentee will have their own mentor. And, but the hub is going to be sustainable. But the uh, mentees returning as a mentors, it was playing a big role in the sustaining the program. And also they believe in the program. That's what they want to come back. And I started in 2016. We are in the seventh year. I have mentors continuing all these seven years throughout the program. So they believe in program. So when I need mentors, sometimes I don't need to look for anymore by myself, but the mentors uh, start to get the word out and they recruit mentors for the uh, program. So I think in that sense, we achieve the uh, sustainability and the impact of the program. And the relationships also, I think everybody kind of pitch in. So we kind of, if a, one of the mentees is gonna go for an interview for a particular week, and the other ones in the learning communities start giving advices, not only their mentors, or a person that graduates, you know, this is 25 week long program, we usually have the graduation sometime mid April, but after the graduation, when the mentees get job offers, the first person they go is their mentors. So the relationships continue beyond the 25 weeks that we were all together. In addition to the impacts that Ganul discussed, we also have plans to uh, follow up with some of the uh, previous cohorts, the AWARES graduates who have moved on into their careers and we received some grant funding to be able to reach back out to them and find out what they are doing right now and um, you know, kind of follow up on, on the uh, impact that the AWARES program had on them longitudinally. So in my time with the AWARES program um, over the last four years, I've served in a few different roles. So one capacity has been on the research and evaluation side of things, and another has been serving as an advisor for um, what Ganul referred to as our learning communities, which is where our mentees have the opportunity to engage in sort of guided reflections on the topic for the week with the other mentees or their peers in the program. So in my capacity as a learning community advisor, I've been able to hear from many mentees about the positive impact that AWARES is having in their lives before they're even completing the program. So for example, mentees will share success stories about times where they've been able to apply what they're learning in AWARES uh, to things like successfully negotiating their salary for an internship or for a job offer. Um, and then mentees will also share similar sentiments on the surveys that we use for evaluation. So for example, mentees will share that there has been times where what they were learning in the AWARES program aligned with where they were in the job search process. And they say that without AWARES, you know, they would have felt far less confident in their skills. So that's been wonderful and encouraging to hear that mentees are experiencing success in applying these strategies that they're learning about in AWARES and that the mentorship is having a positive impact before they've even started their careers. That's phenomenal. Thank you all for 
for sharing that because I, I, as I was reading through the case study, uh, so many of those uh, impacts were so evident and and also so so um, uh, well evaluated. Uh, and surely, as you mentioned, uh, um, in terms of what future opportunities there are to do a longitudinal study, I think can be is really really powerful. And so, uh, Ariana. <clears throat> Given your experience with the program and the work that you're currently doing and the roles that you have had, what, what makes a great mentoring relationship? Yeah, that's a great question. So I think there are several factors that are integral to an effective mentorship relationship. So one factor in the AWARES program that is particularly relevant is having a mentor who is similar to the mentee. And so for the AWARES program, we pair women in STEM majors with women who are in STEM careers. So mentors and mentees are similar, not only in their gender identity, but we also aim to match the mentee major with the mentor in the same or similar field. So mentees report that they feel empowered by working with people who are similar to them. So working with women who are in um, industry. And this is able, we're able to provide mentees with someone who they can relate to, who has experienced um, similar things in the workforce that they might encounter, or who has encountered obstacles that these women, these mentees expect that they might encounter themselves in the future. So in this way, mentors are able to serve as effective models for mentees because they have those aspects of similarity, which can be really beneficial for uh, the mentees learning outcomes. Other aspects of great mentoring that I would like to add are that they are structured and sustained. So as we've already talked about, um, the mentor-mentee dyads are provided a really good structure for their conversations surrounding the curriculum topics. They are given reading materials ahead of time. They know that this is what we should focus on in this particular week. Uh, these topics target those workplace skills and issues that could be difficult for women in their STEM careers. Um, furthermore, their relationship is sustained over the 25 weeks across the academic year. This gives them the time and the opportunity to become comfortable with each other and develop that trusting relationship. And also, uh, you know, we tried as much as possible that to match their background, but we try to emphasize over and over again, regardless of the background, the women will face the similar issues. But still, because I want to tell a little story that one time we didn't have a really exact match on the background, but in that case, mentor took upon herself to find a colleague who is in the same major as her mentee and brought them for a conversation. So this is, shows that how committed the mentors to their mentees. And then that makes even the mentee more, uh, you know, um, appreciative toward her mentor and for developing a much better relationship. Also, uh, our mentors, most of the time, they don't see that they are only helping another person, but this is, they realize that this is a mutual learning environment. Sometimes both the mentor, we have several incidents of that, although at different stages of their careers, mentor with a 10, 15 years experience go for a job searching process at the same time mentee going through first job experience. So they share with each other, they go this some mutually beneficial environment they find and they grow out of these together. So I think that those are also uh, help build these relationships uh, better and more in depth relationships. 
And so many mentors, you know, because dating always, they approach the way they have anecdotal, again, um, responses to our survey that they say that they wish they had similar programs when they going through their undergraduate uh, education. And the mentors also, they reflect on their careers. And uh, they might base on make uh, some changes in their uh, career plans. So provides benefits to them also. So making again, mutually beneficial relationships. I mean, as much the mentees learn from the mentors experiences, mentors learn some of the new things uh, that developing in the educational uh, area and then they reflect themselves. There's a lot of reflection yeah. going back and forth in these things. Even in the learning community meetings, we emphasize that we ask them to share the reflections from their own mentees. The knowledge get expanded. So the mentees not only learn from their own mentor, only one individual, but others' perspectives also brought to the in the learning communities uh, by the their uh, peers uh, into this program yeah and i think that was really evident as i was reading through your case study um the the reciprocity the mutuality and sort of the cascading impact of of peer learning of a mentor to mentee learning um, and 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 all of that really because of the amount of effort and work you all have put into building such an incredible program. So I imagine that some of the folks listening and watching uh, today that we want I hope read through your case study are perhaps in their earliest stages of planning or implementing a mentoring program. Perhaps they're doing it for the first time. Uh, and so, what advice would you give to somebody who's preparing to implement or plan or build out a mentoring program? Well, the most important thing is to determine the needs of the people who is going to benefit from the program. And based on that, clearly define the objectives, what these people should gain from uh, this program. And then, then set the strategies toward uh, that uh, goal. And another important thing is the commitment from everyone. So, you know, we tell these mentees, for example, you know, uh, that this is a professional relationship. So they have to uh, build all their commitment based on that. They have a utmost commitment to their mentor. They cannot miss any meeting. And so as the peers, they are waiting the information they are gonna bring, as well as they are gonna get information from their learning com uh, communities. So I think that uh, that's very important to instill in, in them from the first day of the program that how important that this is a professional relationship and they will have uh, respect to each other. The first time in the learning communities we get together, we do um, group agreements. They write all of them what is important for them to be part of the group. And then they agree on that, you know, because even when we have the in person meetings, or then everybody's cameras are on, uh, phones are off, because when you are speaking, I am listening to you. That is active listening, and that's part of the being a professional. So we try to instill those things um, as part of the uh, program. And so, and also uh, in the implementation, you know, uh, that each year we get a feedback and we may need to change some of the ways, the, even the curriculum topics or the way we are uh, arranging in these things, 
making more interactive with the mentees and the um, mentors. So for example, when we uh, at some point, uh, we uh, wanted to open up to the students from other universities beyond Ohio State University. This meant uh, that being uh, putting the program into a virtual environment so we can do Zoom meetings, but the students' networking increased even because we now we are bringing at uh, some uh, year we had. Uh, three different university students were involved in the program. And this opportunity also opened up the, um, for us to recruit mentors from other states. But the only uh, rule we set it in place, the relationship building is very important, whether you are in the virtual medium or the in-person environment, we have to have face-to-face -face conversations. We can't have phone conversations. We have to see each other. We have to look into each other's eye. We have to build relationships. That's great. Thank you. Ariana. Yeah, so my advice for folks who are interested in starting a formal mentorship program would be to identify strong partners both within and outside your areas of expertise who share similar goals or similar passions um, and who are able to make contributions to areas where you may need support. So we just heard some great examples from Ganul about um, how the mentors, the mentors fulfill this role, whether it's mentors that return year after year because they see the value of the program, whether it's mentees who participated in the program themselves and go on to be mentors, either within AWARES or outside of it. Um, those are partners that are invaluable. Um, and so being able to identify those partnerships um, and areas where others will make contributions for the benefit of the program is great. Um, another way that we see this, for example, in the AWARES program is through the interdisciplinary collaboration um, between GANUL in the um, College of Food, Agriculture, and Environmental Sciences, and then myself and Shirley in the College of Education and Human Ecology. So we're able to bring really different strengths and areas of expertise to the program, which of course helps support the program goals and its overall effectiveness. I would say we also take a similar approach to sustain the program financially. So we've been able to obtain funding from a variety of resources, whether it's external resources, like um, for example, a grant from the Engineering Information Foundation or more internal resources as well, such as at the college level um, through the College of Engineering or through uh, the university level, such as through the Office of Diversity and Inclusion. So by having these multiple partnerships and identifying partners who share your passions and your goal, ultimately it benefits the program and the participants in AWARES. In addition to all of that great advice, I would add, that it's very important to have an evaluation and dissemination plan. So Gunol mentioned defining the program's specific learning objectives. From that, you should have your assessment instruments that are aligned with the program's objectives so that you can actually collect data to see if those objectives are being met. Then disseminating what you learned via uh, local media, conference presentations, and publications is really important. Um, we want others to learn from our experience with the AWARES program. So for example, we have presented our results at the Mentoring Institute, um, invited keynotes at other universities, colleges of engineering, um, at the American Educational Research Association and the Mentoring Special Interest Group, and now in this handbook. So having those um, lessons learned, shared widely is so important. Yeah, I think all of you, right? That's such important and critical advice for someone that I think is gonna be so incredibly valuable. And before we go, I have to ask because you know, as you all may know, you know, where you are now is not where the AWARES program started. It was a journey. And uh, over time, you continue to improve and advance the program. 
So there may be folks who are starting with less. And so <clears throat> given all that is possible, what do you think is a must have, right? If everything's not possible, what's a must have? I think the for me must have the most important is the commitment. Mm -hmm. Everybody, you know, uh, interested in the program. In like we um, put out, we have a website, so we put the application forms there. Both the mentors and mentee they applied, and but then on we expect a commitment to each other and to the program. And then um, program is not really never been over the seven years, although we are doing this in an auto mode, because right. every year something changes. The pandemic happened or the other uh, things or like the um, if women is elected to a certain place, you know, we just yeah. visit uh, the, those things. I mean, program always is committed to make it better for the participants. And we always address the new issues. For example, one year, about four years ago, the this uh, when the Me Too movement started, we decided to include a sexual harassment and equity in the workplace um, panel discussion. This became an annual event in our uh, program, part of our program, because we wanted to learn, the, our mentees learn how important still this issue. And this was the mentor's suggestion. And we want them to understand from the legal point what is the sexual harassment? So they can identify these important topics and what kind of uh, rules and uh, programs in place, either in universities or in the workplaces. So we always renew our program for each year for the new participants. So I think that is an important thing commitment basically by everyone, including the program um, staff that uh, Ariana has been serving in that. And nice to have, you know, it is nice to have that professional uh, background match. That's why we try to do that. Yeah. Even we kind of accommodate if they want to go to a workplace or a graduate school. We even bring try to bring those uh, experiences, and so they can feel more comfortable yeah. with each other. I think that's the uh, only uh, point. And um, I'm looking can live with uh, without um, that. We don't need a lot of experience of the mentors. We have mentors. Um, as you know, in the workplace, as uh, little as two years, but then mentors as long as 20 years in the work experience. But they bring different, uh, again, a different learning environment, different uh, for each other. They sometimes they grow together. Sometimes if they are not, they don't know enough to mentors, they find the necessary uh, information. We just want them to share their experiences so the mentees will be uh, ready. That's great. That's great. And who wants to go next with your must have, nice to have, can live without? I think that uh, Ganul covered it really well. Um, I think the to really um, emphasize that the must have is that commitment and the passion for the mentoring relationship, right? Because the mentors are doing this as a voluntary effort. Yes. Um, for the most part, the, it's the same thing with us. So it's it requires someone who is willing to dedicate that time and energy to the mentoring program and to the relationship. Yeah, that requires that uh, like 
in evening commitments, like that's what Ariana doing uh, at the moment, uh, serving as a learning community advisor, or the mentees, you know, uh, we just uh, take their dinner hours and we will have dinner conversations uh, with them. Yeah. Ariana, anything you want to add? I would echo what Ganul and Shirley said, um, that commitment from the mentors and the mentees is especially important. Um, you know, both parties lead such busy lives. And so we do really see that they're committed to each other um, in those relationships. And that's a really wonderful thing to see and helps make the program as effective as it is by having that commitment to each other and to having that relationship. Well, thank you. I think that's <clears throat> you know, there's so much to learn from the work that you have done, the commitment that you all have to this program, to your to your industry, uh, to advancing women in STEM. We know that there is a need for a greater diversity uh, in uh, STEM. And so uh, I so appreciate as, as, as someone on this planet and in this country and in these communities uh, that... Um, you know, we are um, taking the steps and efforts to, to really help pave the way uh, for greater diversity within our organizations and for people to succeed once they're there. So thank you all so much for the work you do. Thank you for sharing your work in this handbook. And of course, thank you so much for our conversation today. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you. It's been wonderful. Yeah, thank you for this opportunity. And Absolutely. this is, I guess, give us all of us an opportunity to talk it over this one. You know, we always do this in writing, but this yeah. is really nice for all of us to talk about this too. Phenomenal. Well, thank you all so much. And thank you everybody for listening and watching. We look forward to seeing you in the